Welcome to the Abstract Writing Presentation, brought to you by the Honors College at the University of Illinois at Chicago. In this presentation, we will review information and best practices pertaining to writing a clear, concise, and effective conference abstract. The agenda for this presentation includes reviewing the purpose of a conference abstract, the basic components of an abstract, a rubric for abstract writing, and a sample abstract that demonstrates this rubric. What is a conference abstract? A conference abstract is a concise description of an ongoing research project, a showcase of major points, and a snapshot of the content of your work. It should give the reader a clear idea of your research project and its contributions to the field. The goal of a conference abstract is to make conference attendees come to your presentation. You want to attract fellow researchers whose own research may be in conversation with your project, as well as other conference attendees from other disciplines and fields who find your project compelling. With this in mind, a good conference abstract is one that provides a clear summary of your project as straightforwardly as possible. Write a brief, well-developed paragraph that includes an introduction, body, and conclusion, and that describes your full project. Be sure to use as many words as necessary within the word limit to explain your project, but do not go over this word limit. Similarly, make sure that you are following other abstract criteria specified by the opportunity you are applying to. Context matters, so pay attention to these details. The structure of a good abstract can typically be broken down into the following six basic components. Note that a conference abstract is typically 150 to 350 words long. First, you want to provide a descriptive and captivating yet concise title for your project. Next, you should write a one to two sentence introduction about why your research is important. Be bold in your opening sentence, but stay focused on the specificities of your project from the first sentence. Two good questions to address in your abstract introduction are, what is your research question? And if applicable, what is your hypothesis? Your methods should be explained in one to three sentences, including information about your design and data collection. This section should help the reader understand what data you looked at to answer your research question and how you gathered and interpreted your data. Up next is the results section, which explains in one to three sentences what the major findings of your research project are, or if your project is ongoing, what you anticipate your major findings will be. It's important to also specify in one to two sentences the key and overarching implications of your research project. How do the project's findings contribute to the larger conversation researchers in your field are having? Are there any social or cultural implications to your findings? Indeed, addressing these questions will lead you into the final component, your conclusion and suggestions in which you should explain in one sentence how researchers might build upon your project in future research. Keep your voice active and optimistic when explaining your results. For a research project that is ongoing, consider using a future tense sentence that predicts what might happen. An example of the beginning of such a sentence is, by this method, we will be able to demonstrate for a research project that is completed, speak of the results in the present perfect tense. An example of the beginning of such a sentence is, by this method we have demonstrated. The iterative process is a cyclical process by which an individual develops a project in increments using feedback from a mentor or mentors at each stage. Good scholars spend time writing and developing their projects via the iterative process. In other words, good scholars do not submit the first draft of their work as the final product. Instead, they may submit a draft for feedback, then use that feedback to revise and strengthen the draft 
before resubmitting it for additional review and feedback. They will do this until their peers and or mentors believe their project is polished enough. You should plan on using the iterative process to develop a polished enough conference abstract by sharing an initial draft with a faculty mentor to ask for feedback. In addition to the iterative process, additional best practices include the following. Spell out all acronyms. Do not assume your reader will know what an acronym stands for. Use general language as opposed to the specialized language of your field. For specialized terms and phrases you must use, provide a brief definition to the reader. Keep in mind that you're trying to attract a large audience. Be concise. Eliminate unnecessary words and sentences and avoid repetitive information. Maintain flow by having logical transitions between the information you included. Write strongly by maintaining an active voice throughout the abstract. If you are referring to something you have already completed, like data collection or an experiment, use the past tense. Pay attention to the rubrics provided by the opportunity you are applying to. Word limits and other criteria are very important. Let's look at an example of a conference abstract that uses the abstract template we have previously reviewed. As a reminder, the basic components of a good abstract include a concise title, along with an introduction method section, results section, and a section that explains key implications as well as conclusions and suggestions for future work. Graduate teaching assistants GTAs, play a prominent role in chemistry laboratory instruction. However, their role in laboratory instruction education has too often been overlooked in educational research. This presentation reports on a cross-case analysis of two studies designed to investigate how graduate students in two independent and very different learning environments constructed their GTA self-image and what factors contributed to this process. 13 GTAs from an expository-based program and 11 GTAs from an inquiry-based program participated in this study. Findings suggest that GTA's construction of their self-image is shaped through the interaction of several factors, prior experiences, training, beliefs about the nature of knowledge in laboratory work, and involvement in the laboratory setting. Findings from this study can assist introductory chemistry laboratory instructors and coordinators to reconsider, when applicable, their GTA training and continuous support, and may place laboratory reform in a new light of appreciation. In this example, the first three sentences are the introduction. Notice how GTAs is spelled out in the first sentence. Whereas the first two sentences in black font use general language to explain the gap in knowledge, the third sentence in orange font specifies that the study will be a cross-case analysis while noting the focus of the investigation. The fourth sentence in purple font continues the explanation of methods by sharing details about the two studies of the cross-case analysis. The fifth sentence in green font shares the results of this study. And finally, the sixth sentence in blue font indicates key implications to the field as well as future directions of application. For additional examples of conference abstracts, please seek out the abstracts of poster presentations that have won recognition in previous years at UIC's Impact and Research Day, formerly known as the UIC Student Research Forum. Abstracts can be located at the web address http colon forward slash forward slash research dot uic dot edu forward slash ird. In closing, please remember to always stick to the word limit, always polish and revise your writing, 
maintain a general tone throughout your abstract, and have someone unfamiliar with your field of study read your abstract to provide feedback. If you have any questions about crafting a strong conference abstract, contact a faculty mentor or speak with your academic advisor. From the Honors College at the University of Illinois at Chicago, good luck and enjoy your research journey.